probably the most important part of Admin Tools Professional is the Web Application Firewall, as this provides a suite of tools to protect your website. It's active from the moment that you install Admin Tools. You can configure it from the Security section by selecting Web Application Firewall. Here you will see several options. The most important one, and the one we will concentrate on in this video, is Configure WAF. WAF is just an abbreviation for Web Application Firewall. To begin, click on the Configure WAF icon. The first part covers the basic protection features, whether we should allow administrators access to the website based on an IP address, or whether we should use a secret URL parameter. This is covered in more detail in video 7. Moving on to the active request filtering. This is the important stuff that protects your website from malicious people. As you can see, by default, some of them are set to yes and others set to no. I strongly recommend that you stick to these default settings. Changing some of the ones that are currently set to no to yes can definitely be called paranoia and may cause issues with some of your extensions and need customization. You can find further information about all of these options and exactly what they do in the documentation that you can find at the kibabackup.com website. That with this default settings, your website is being protected automatically from many of the most common types of vulnerability that exists on the web. If we scroll down to the next section called Joomla feature hardening options. The first of these is whether you should allow access to the Joomla extension installer and who should receive access. The Joomla default is that anyone with administrator or above will have access to the installer. Many people would prefer to change it to that only the super administrator has access. The next one causes much confusion with users. By default, it is set that you, it is impossible using the user manager to change the permissions, properties and privileges of any of the users who have access to the administrator of Joomla backend. If you go to the user manager and try to change any of those properties, perhaps the password, for example, you will get an error. The only way that you will be able to change their password or any of the other details is either with the user themselves doing it through the front end of your website or by you going in and changing this from yes to no. The next setting will disable the ability for super administrators to log in using their super administrator details to the front end of your website. By default, this is set to no, but it's probably a good idea to set this to yes. If they know a super administrator username, then they can attempt brute force to log in at the front end. So I usually set the, this to yes, so that the super user can't log in at the front end. If I need front end access for myself, I'll create myself a regular registered user account in addition to my super user account. The next option is whether we treat failed logins as security exceptions. By default, this is set to yes, and we'll talk about security exceptions more in a little while. Now we have the visual fingerprinting protection. Many people believe that it's good to hide the fact that you're using Joomla for your websites. There are many ways that you can identify a website as running Joomla, one of which is that Joomla by default uses a custom meta tag. Many template developers already override this, but if yours doesn't and you wish to do so, you can hide or customize the tag by setting this to yes and set your own generator tag here if you so wished. Perhaps as a joke, you might want to set it to WordPress. 
The following options are about whether you should block access to loading your site with the default templates. I recommend leaving this as yes, as it is possible under some circumstances that someone could load your website with one of those default templates and see stuff that maybe you didn't want them to see. Project Honeypot is an external application. It is designed to prevent people using your contact forms, etc., for spam. You can find out more at the Project Honeypot website, and you can click on the link there to find out more information. And now we get to the bit about what to do about repeat offenders. Each time someone makes a failed attempt, we log it, and after a defined number of attempts, we block them from accessing our website completely. The way to do this is by IP address. An IP address is a unique number assigned to every internet connection. Now, of course, this isn't perfect because a good hacker may well be using a randomizing IP address, but it does prevent the normal script kiddies. So I recommend that you set this to yes. Now, we need to decide, do we want to email someone to say there's been an automatic ban? I'd like to know that something's going on, so I'm going to put my own email address in there. I can now choose what the trigger is for the ban. By default, it's three attacks in one hour. But you can change that to whatever criteria you want, even to minutes or days. I usually set it to three attacks in 15 minutes. And then it's how long you want to ban that person for. I don't want that person ever to be a peer, so I'll put in a really large number, the number of days. And now when that person returns to my website, they will be blocked and the only thing they will see is this message. There's a few different types of logging that Admin Tools Professional offers you. The first one is that it is possible to add a note for every single user to store the IP address that they used when they signed up. If you have a use for this, set this to yes. Now is the main one, which is logging the security exceptions. If we don't log the exceptions, then none of the banning that I just talked about can happen because each exception would be treated as unique. So leave this as yes. We can now choose to send an email on every single security exception. If you want to apply this, just enter your email address in here. Personally, I don't bother setting this, as there can be quite a lot of exceptions, which actually are nothing to worry about. They just mean someone's tried and been blocked. However, you might want to choose to enable the next one, to send an email every time somebody logs in to your administrator. Now, if you've got a lot of administrators, you probably don't want to set this. But if you're the only one and somebody's able to log in, then that's a security issue and I'd want to know about it. So I'm going to enter my email address in there. And so now if anybody logs into the administrator of this website, I will be notified. We could also set it to be notified on every failed attempt. But again, the same with the security exceptions. There could be a lot. And do I want to know about the failures? Once you've set web application firewall configuration exactly how you want it, and made sure that you've read the documentation to understand what the settings are, press save and close and all those configured options for the web application firewall are now in operation. In the next video, we will look and see exactly what messages are received by Admin Tools Professional when a security exception is logged.